Howdy doody, Articulate Turds. Welcome back to my show called Articulate with Stephen Chips. You know where you are. Why would I, why do I have to announce that every time? Isn't that annoying? I don't know. I find it annoying. Anyways, um, for this episode, uh, it's gonna kind of be, uh, you know, it's gonna kind of be me riffing a little bit, a little bit, uh, a little bit about this show. Like I had this, uh, we had a whole thing recorded and set. I recorded this. Uh, episode with my good friend Chris Beckman about automation and how that's going to affect industry and stuff like that and it's, it was so good it was really good and it somehow the recording got messed up yeah it got fucked up somehow and I am kind of sad about it because I was planning on not doing that not doing anything tonight besides editing that and doing whatever and here's here's a clip of that if if, if you want to hear what happened to it products quicker is considered automation so stuff like conveyor belts conveyor belts wait, wait. Pizza. Jackass. bastard <laughs> so there yeah that's proof that i you know i at least put some effort into an episode and this one isn't just me bullshitting because i want to you know so i thought i thought it'd be fun you know to talk about the show that i've been watching called midnight gospel I don't know if you heard of her or seen her or not, but it is intense to me. I really like it. I really like the show because it's what they call it online is like an anti Rick and Morty, which is interesting to me. And I'll kind of get into that later. But what it is, is really, it's almost like it's, it's actual clips from Duncan Trussell's podcast that the animator of Adventure Time animates a crazy world around and so that's the cool part i think one of the themes that you you see a lot in media nowadays is the multiverse theme the idea that there is more dimensions and things going on out there and different versions of our life and earth that we haven't even experienced yet and i mean it's it's get it's making itself into mainstream it's making its way into mainstream media like Rick and Morty, obviously, but even like Avengers has some of that in it. Um, this show called Dark on Netflix has a little bit of it, um, which is just, you know, it's in Avengers, it's like in the end game when they go back in time and they create a different universe kind of thing. So it's not necessarily that, but you know, it's, it's just becoming more prevalent and people are thinking about it a lot more. And so uh, Midnight Gospel is really interesting because it's about this, this guy Clancy who has a simulator that which is interesting they call it a simulator but really they, he he gets an avatar and he puts his head in this like vagina <laughs> looking thing and he gets shot off into a, a different version of earth or of you know life of a planet where sentient beings uh survive and he goes through all these adventures throughout the episode with one character but what happens is they end up just talking about these podcast ideas of life and death and drugs and magic and, you know, really philosophical um, conversation that goes on between these people. And I really like it. You know, it's it's really interesting because, and I mean, even in the first episode, they're talking about how to drugs, there's always a, a positive and a negative, how there's no, there's not such thing as a bad drug, as long as you can control you know, your usage of it and, and kind of track, you know, you don't have to watch it to kind of get into it more, but, but they talk about these philosophical events while, so he, he goes to this planet and he's talking to the president of this planet and the president is like fending off zombies at the time and everybody's trying to make a cure and whatnot. And, and that's crazy. Um, there's another episode where they talk about, you know, the, the mind being a prison. And then this guy is also breaking out of prison at the same time is really cool this show speaks to me because first of all i've had my own encounters with spirituality um if you want to listen to a couple episodes well a few a while ago i I did an episode on meditation i made like a dual episode release thing which i thought was pretty fun (laughs) and it kind of gets into the spirituality of being here a little bit but it's not it's less about the spirituality and more of just like facing reality uh, whereas the show kind of dives a little bit deeper with it. And that's what really why I like it. Because, again, I only have brushed the surface with spirituality. And the show 
you know, really dives into what it, what you can gain from diving inward instead of outward, you know, and things that all human beings are going to experience at some point, like death or, you know, the ups and the downs and, and, and listening, being able to, to channel a listening mindset with somebody, you know, if you're sitting down with somebody and they're talking to you, but you just don't, it does just not getting through, you know, you can, you can do like an, an autopilot response and and just kind of keep the conversation going, but it's, you're not really listening to that person. And, you know, that's something you want to be able to give people your 110%. And you're full, you know, you want to be there, you want to be in that moment to fully respond to them. So that way, you know, that's how you want to be treated. You want people to respond to you in that same way. Uh, So, you know, it really kind of, it makes a lot of ideas that seem outlandish and crazy. It it brings them down back to reality, which is really cool. That's what I, I really like about the show. Um, it, it, it's funny in the third episode, they talk with this guy, one of these guys from the West Memphis three, I don't know if you've ever heard of that or not, but it's these three people who were convicted back in the day of raping and murdering three children. And it's fucked up because you know, you listen to this episode, it's episode three, and this guy just starts out immediately just talking about, he's like, well, first off, I want to talk about magic. He's like, magic is like something that you is not necessarily, I don't don't even know how it goes, but he talks about this idea of ceremonial magic versus the idea of like Chris Angel or David Blaine magic. You know, it's the idea of, you know, it's almost enlightenment and manifestation and through spirituality, in a way where things are of a higher dimension, if that makes sense. It's it's crazy because, you know, it's, again, on first listen, you're like, oh, magic? What This guy's just going to talk about magic? What, what is going on? But you start to figure out that it's not like, you know, he's not doing magic tricks, right? He's not just kind of like, he's not just making a bunny appear out of his asshole or something. <laughs> he's, uh, you know, he's... The type of magic he's talking about is being able to manifest something and kind of being able to be fully in the present to the point where it's not just an enlightenment. It's not like you through meditation, you just reach this moment of presence, but it's developing after enlightenment, developing a completely present mindset. And then after that, into developing a completely present mind and body, which is crazy to me. Uh, it was, I, I, that's one of the episodes that really spoke to me. Just, I mean, just cause it was sound, just because it sounded crazy that he was just talking about magic right off the bat. And it was such like a, um, an interesting view on spirituality, but also afterwards I, you know, I, he, during the episodes, he, he talks about when he went to jail and kind of how that experience changed him and how he like, ex- he was able to explore magic more while he was in prison. Um, and I, I really didn't want to look into what he went to jail for, but obviously, like I said earlier, it was pretty fucked up. Like I I found out later that he went to jail because he was convicted of, like I said, murdering and raping. Well, they don't know. They're not sure on the rape, but there are these three kids that were found like dead in a ditch with like their scrotums cut open and just weird, weird other shit going on there. And there was actually a lot of controversy around it, too. There's many documentaries and stuff that have been released about the Memphis Three, and there's not... There is evidence, is the thing. There is, like, some weird, at least coincidences of how they're connected. But in general, it seems like the West Memphis Three, it seems like the guy in this episode of Midnight Gospel was just friends or, like, acquaintances with this other crazy guy. And it seems like it's more likely that just that crazy guy did it. Or even one of the kids' stepdads, you know, there, there, were, there were a lot of suspects in the situation. And the thing is, the police messed up the whole investigation. And it, it just, even if they did do it, it's not like you would 
actually have any hard evidence of it anymore because the police messed everything up so much. So, you know, it's just kind of weird to think about this guy going to jail for like 30 years and discovering magic. I, I, I don't know. And, and then getting out. That's the thing. He did get out. And people did believe, or still do believe, that he's not guilty. But now he's preaching this enlightenment stuff. And I don't know. It, that's why I didn't want to look into it. Because I liked the enlightenment stuff right off the bat. And, you know, just on face, taking it on face value. And now I have to think about, if I wanted to go back and listen to that episode, I have to be like, well, this guy also may or may not have dissected a, a, a young child. <laughs> And, and killed them, which is uh, pretty fucked up. But anyway, so what I was saying earlier, how this is like an anti-Rick and Morty thing, is like this show, Rick and Morty is all about, like, the similarities between the two is that they are all about, again, the multiverse, but also exploring those, those deep, uh, philosophical debates of, you know, whether life is worth living and there's always going to be death that we're going to have to face and, and things like that. And Rick and Morty just takes such a negative view of these things and kind of, I mean, it's funny and that's my personal debate is I want to be a positive person, but a lot of comedy comes from, you know, negative ideas. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I don't know how that works. Like, I, there's, there's things, it's not even like you're specifically making fun of somebody, but if you're making fun of a situation, even if you made jokes about the coronavirus, that's something negative, and then at that point, you're kind of putting that out into the world, but you're kind of making it into a positive thing because you're making people laugh, so it's a little different, but with Rick and Morty, you know, they, they're they like making, you know, nobody exists on purpose or whatever, come watch TV, it's like, oh, yeah, that's kind of true, and also, yeah, come watch TV, it's kind of funny, like, you you know, make a distraction for yourself, whereas Midnight Gospel kind of takes these ideas and is like, hey, you know, think about these head on, you know, be present in the moment, and get into the idea that you are going to die someday, and get into the idea that here right now, there is something that is kind of guiding you, you know, it's, and that's the other thing, is like, does this the show almost makes me feel like I am not, I haven't fully decided on my religious beliefs, and that's not what we're here to discuss, is my religious beliefs, but, you know, this show, it's called Midnight Gospel, you know, it's it's about the idea of presence, not only presence and being here in spirituality, but also kind of what that presumes about the afterlife, you know, and, and what those, you know, that spirituality means in humanity, I guess. I don't know. It's very abstract and it's kind of hard to, to put into words, at least for me, because I'm still, you know, processing a lot of it and thinking a lot about it. Uh, whereas, you know, again, comparing it to Rick and Morty, Rick and Morty is very nihilistic and like, yeah, God isn't real. We're all going to like, I am God or whatever, because Rick's so smart and whatnot. Actually, you know, Rick and Morty, these, I don't know if you like, all have seen season four yet uh, up to this point, but it's not been great. It's not good. That show's kind of, it's kind of sad too, because they had such potential with the first two seasons and now it's just, even season three, it was not great. I, I don't know. Don't really want to get into that. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> watch Rick and Morty, but also don't watch Rick and Morty. And now watch Midnight Gospel, but also still watch Midnight Gospel. <laughs> it just, again, it, it just, I think it's great because it's becoming a mainstream idea. And especially now during quarantine and everything, people have time to sit home and watch these shows that Netflix promotes for them. And it's like, I was never a big fan of promotional things like that from Netflix because it's like, oh, these are basic things and almost like, you know, they Netflix could brainwash people if they wanted to because people just watch the first thing that pops up. But, you know, <laughs> I, I mean, that's just my opinion. But it, it, it's like Midnight Gospel being promoted. It's, I think it's being promoted because of the animation style, but the content to it, the, the, the concepts behind it and the ideals that it, it promotes 
are things beyond that of basic, you know, of basic brainwashing. Like everything they talk about kind of goes against societal conditioning, I guess. You know, it's, it's kind of hard to talk about, but there are a lot of things today in this day and age that influence our lives. And there's good media and there's bad media. Or, you know, there's there's media that stimulates your brain and there's media that doesn't necessarily do so. So, I always come back to this example, but Marvel movies. Marvel movies are not stimulating. They're easy and they're fun to watch. That's what I'm saying. I like Marvel movies. However, they don't make you question things in your life. They don't make you try to find an inner truth or see things differently, uh, is, is really how I see it. So, I mean, it seems like those are the type of things that have been promoted. Like Marvel was one of the biggest, I mean, Endgame was one of the biggest grossing movies, I think is the biggest grossing movie of all time. Whereas, you know, even Rick and Morty, like Rick and Morty being a big show, it was good at first because of the questions that it made people think of and and pose. But now, it's kind of become almost a negative influence. So as, so Midnight Gospel kind of plays into this a little bit more because I think, again, it's something that can catch your eye. It's an animation style you recognize. It's being promoted. And it's also promoting this idea of, of mental stimulation of, okay, what happens to human beings as they age? How do we progress as a society and how does our spirituality influence our life and beyond? So, I, I, I don't know. It, it, there's just so many things in the show. And, and that's the thing. is It's not only those, but also the, the stories that they create with the animation are just really interesting as well. You know, it's, there was this one where this guy's in prison and the main character, Clancy, gets shot onto the planet and breaks holes from the ceiling of the prison down to the bottom and you see him trying to escape the whole time and the whole time he's like you know the whole thing about the plan is you can't die you just get reborn and you get put back into the situation of the prison and the whole time he's trying to escape and he kills other people and other people kill him he dies and he gets reborn and he starts back over at the bottom in his prison cell and has to climb back up and by the end of it, you know, and that's that is that's the thing. That is a crazy story in itself, but then the conversation they're having outside of that is crazy as well. You know, it's it's really interesting and deep. So, but but they align in a way, and they don't always align. But so the idea, and then at the end, he you know he kind of starts to see, okay, these other prisoners are exactly like him. He starts to see his face on the other prisoners, and he's like, all right, I need to help them get out, and then maybe I'll be able to, you know. Because he goes through the, this thing of rebirth and it fucks with him and he always gets weighed on his sins and whatnot. But in the end, he's you know he learns the lesson and and that's the thing is the the physical story in the multiverse is crazy because as opposed to Rick and Morty, the conversation and the story in the multiverse usually line up to being negative or ending in existential dread, whereas. Both of these, the conversation in Midnight Gospel and the story in Midnight Gospel leads to this idea of acceptance and understanding and just just deeper thought about these ideas. So, you know, I, I think it's a really good thing. It, it, it's probably a good sign for where I think our society might be headed. If we can use this time of quarantine to promote shows like that and ideas outside of, you know, now that we've kind of come to understand what it's like to be completely alone and separate from everybody. Now we can fully appreciate the idea of coming together and unity with humans, you know? Um, I mean, there's also still that, that part of us that, you know, there's the protesters and, people that are want to argue about on either side whether or whether or not we should lift quarantine early or you know whether we shouldn't and it's like you should be able to come at it from either side be able to understand each other's side but so you know there's still that negative part but again if we can if this helps us realize more about 
ourselves as a society, I think it can be a good thing. I think we can move on from here and become a better civilization. But it's going to take a lot. It, you know, personally for me, going through this whole thing has been really, really just depressing. And like, I, I don't know. Today, I just kind of wanted to lay around in bed all day and do absolutely nothing instead of looking to be productive and looking to find a job or looking to be creative or whatever. You know, it, it's, I just wanted to lay around. And, and that's, that's what separates, I think, a productive and positive human being from somebody who who is negative and and it's not to say that each one you know positive positivity and negativity are fluid between people and you can become positive and you can become negative due to things like this or if somebody you can become positive if somebody like reaches out and tries to help you or you know makes you stumble upon a realization yourself so you know i i think again People who are positive and who have made it through this with a positive, you know, with a good attitude and trying to make the best out of everything, those are the people that really need to think about their impact on others and really need to say, how can I share this energy? How can I share this feeling with other people and make them come to this side and Again, I'm I am teetering right now. <laughs> I am teetering between positivity and negativity and I can't you know, I can't I feel like I can't be asked to figure out how to share it with somebody, let alone get it myself, you know. But I think it's important for us to have to keep that in mind when we have that positive energy. Like I went and hung out with an old friend from high school that I hadn't seen in a while and he was telling me about his passions and how he was really <laughs> only passionate about Star Wars and he knows everything about Star Wars or whatever. But that won't lead to anything, like a career or any way to make money in the future. And, you know, I was just like, well, I don't know, man. You, you know, there's a lot that goes into those Star Wars movies. You know, there's lighting production, marketing, there's the business aspects, there's, um, you know, the people who write the script. There's, you know, there's just so many different things that go into those movies. There's acting, obviously directing and, and and then there's also the shows the animation there's the people who write the books on them and, and stuff like that so it's like there are a lot of there could be a lot of opportunities in that and you know that was me just kind of like you know this is something kind of just riffing on the idea that there is there could be something there and he's just like yeah i think you're right man you know i you just don't you just don't hear it a lot you just don't hear that if you know I don't know, you just, that's what I'm saying is the people that have, I had that positive energy this last week, it's kind of, it's kind of like depleted right now, but, which is kind of sad, it's, it's like very dynamic with me, <laughs> right now at least, but, yeah, I think people that have that positive mindset, and even if it's for only a day or a week, you need to be able to, to share it with as many people as you can, when you can, um, and Midnight Gospel does a really, really good job of sharing positive ideals and having good conversation and making people think about things that they wouldn't usually think about. Uh, so yeah, thanks for letting me ramble about it for a little bit. I hope this has inspired you to watch it because again, it, it really can influence you in a positive way. Um, so yeah, check it out. Also adventure. It's from the creator of adventure time and I love adventure time. Check that show out too. It's a much more, it's a way bigger commitment, but if you are, have ever been interested in it, and can handle some kind of weird borderline childish stuff then definitely get into it you just have to it's just again it's more positive and it's creative and it's fun and that's what you should strive to be probably from my perspective but also i don't know anything i'm also a 21 year old kid that knows nothing so take that take all this as you will so anyways thanks for listening i'm sorry i didn't have a longer fuller episode for you but i will for sure next week and I love you. Thank you. Amen. Okay. Bye.